Hey team, this is Barry Watson here. Welcome back, where we're gonna continue our series on wild camping. And today we're gonna to focus on the three major tents that people use for wild camping. So if you're ready, let's go. So the first type of tent that people use for wild camping is literally a camping tent. It's a big bulky thing. It's one that you may have gone away with your family with uh, when you were younger. It's one that uh, parents take away with their kids in summer holidays. And uh, basically, you know, you throw everything in it. You don't care about the weight. You don't care what goes in it because it's got multiple rooms. You know, if you want to bring your king size bed, hey, bring your king size bed. If you want to bring your fridge, hey, bring your fridge. There's plenty of room for it. Why I say that is these are these are big these are bulky and your weight is not a consideration why well mainly because you're putting it in your car you're putting it in your RV you're putting it somewhere where you physically don't have to carry it so weight is not a restriction yes you've got multiple rooms you can stand up in it people will bring their barbecue so it's totally set up for multiple days of camping by a lake but not far from your vehicle why because you are not carrying it the second type of tent, and this is the most popular, this is the one that trampers and hikers all around the world get, and that's your hiking, or as we say in New Zealand, tramping tent. So basically you're looking at something that's lightweight, you're looking at something that hasn't got a massive footprint, you don't bring your fridge, you don't bring your barbecue, everything is contained within this very lightweight but highly protective structure. As you'll see on this one here, you've got a single pole that runs the length of it. And generally with hiking tents, you won't have any more than two poles. Two, one or two would be more than enough. In fact, in fact some tents or tarps and that, they have the, the walking poles as your pole. So it helps reduce weight. You've got on the outside, uh, ripstop fabric. Ripstop fabric has got the lines, the crisscross type lines in it, and that stops ripping. What well, helps reduce um, ripping, and also got a silicon on the outside, which is highly protective, and also stops the rain and, and uh, moisture getting in. You've got adequate pegs around the outside. And that's basically the outside of a hiking tent. All right, so let's move into the inside. Plenty of room, as you can see, and that's really what you want with a hiking tent. Obviously, though, with more space comes more weight, and you've got to get that compromise between what level of comfort you want and what weight you're willing to bear on your back. But this is about a two square meter on the inside tent, which is big enough for a guy like me who's uh, just on six feet. Okay, so one of the things you will notice instantly on this tent that is, there isn't a lot of mesh. And that is for a very good reason. I bought this tent because I did want to take it into the start of winter, where if you've got that open weave mesh, it does allow a lot of very cold wind and air to come through your tent, which is not good if you want to keep it warm. However, in the summertime, it is favorable to have a tent that's got a lot of mesh for two reasons. One, because if it's hot in your tent, it does allow some of that cool evening air to come through your tent and cool it down. And the other thing is that it does help reduce the amount of condensation you get in your tent. But what I like about this tent, and some of them have it, is a double wall. So I can zip this down here and expose the mesh here. So there again, you get the benefits of two two worlds both being able to have it up so that it keeps it nice and warm and stops the cold air coming in but also in terms of reducing condensation it allows that as well but of course the reason why a lot of tents have the open mesh is that it's a lighter weight because with mesh you've got less fabric because you've got the open uh, holes in between it and that allows you to not have to carry a big bulky tent with you you can cut down the amount of weight that you're having to carry which is really important 
one of the questions you may think about is, well, what's the difference between a three season and a four season tent? I'm glad you asked because next we're going to look at the differences between those two things. Let's go. So let's focus on the third type of tent now, and that is the alpine tent. Some would call it a four season tent. Now these are for the people that want to get out in the middle of winter and wild camp, or those who are climbers and will base camp or ascending mountains or going across um, terrain which is going to be quite um, hazardous in terms of weather, or t potentially hazardous anyway in terms of weather. So this is a brand called Hilleberg. It's not the only tent on the market that's a four season. There's quite a few, but this is a one person tent. And what you will notice straight away is a multiple poles. You've got one pole, you've got two poles, and you've got one going across the, the width of the tent. Now, these are nine mil DAC poles. Uh, DAC Featherlight poles are arguably the best brand in the world, the aluminium. You will notice that it's got clips on here which make it very very strong being able to hold up and arguably 60 something k winds if not more and be able to hold up to uh, severe amount of rain in terms of the hydrostatic rating on this tent which is like 5,000 on the outer and about 15 on the floor so a very very strong tent all the ventilation actually comes up from here and goes into your tent because one of the things you will notice very very quickly is that the tent walls go right down to the ground what that means is that that in terms of snow drift and spin drift you don't have to worry about it getting in your tent uh, it's minimized substantially because you've got your walls that go right down to the base of the ground you will notice you have multiple points of guying it out in fact this is double guide and also the other advantage of this tent also you can see that this actually wraps around the pole grabbing onto it and giving it extra strength and extra ability to be able to hold it in place and keep it where you want it to be now straight away compared to a hiking tent you'll notice very very quickly if you haven't already that this is a far more robust tent now what I've learned and I've learned it very quickly is you can have two things but you've got to choose one and you've got to choose one carefully you've got to choose between strength which this tent is and lightness which is my tent over there so you've got to make a choice if you're going into three season tents like in the middle of summer I probably wouldn't take this tent to be honest because it's too heavy it, it, it's it's literally like taking a V8 to the supermarket to do your groceries you don't need to yes it's nice but you don't need to it's, there's going to come a cost to you of being able to do that now this tent here is what they call a geodesic dome in other words it's more oval than it is rectangular and that's really really helpful in terms of being able to displace and push the wind away from you especially when it gets really really bad in some wild nights of wild camping is it needed in most cases probably not uh, if you're going to just use it for three seasons but certainly really really helpful when it comes to four season okay so the next type of tent i'd like to show you is also an alpine four season tent this is a two person tent but what i want to focus on that this is a tunnel tent now a tunnel tent is one that is more of a rectangular shape still strong if they're guided out and pitched right they're still very very strong this particular tent i've had it in 50 mile an hour 80 k gusts and it was fairly horrendous <laughs> because i've never been anything like that but I, I was still within the in the confines of what was safe and reasonable for a tent an alpine tent of this sort of nature even though this tent doesn't have like the other red one i just showed you the outer going right down to the ground this one does provide a bit of ventilation but you will see on the front here it does have what you call snow skirts there are around three areas of the 
tent and what they do is they stop a lot of spin drift coming in to the main vestibule of this tent so if the wind is driving this way you would obviously want to set your tent this way so you've got your gear in there and you, you're going to stop having a lot of the snow getting into your tent by having your snow skirts down on the ground. You may be thinking as you're listening to this, well, what's the next thing that I should get? What tent should I get next? If I'm looking at buying another tent or your first tent, how should I do that? You know, I was faced with the same dilemma when I was looking for a, for a first tent. I didn't have a clue. And I used a matrix. I want to share with you in the next video in our wild camping series, a, a matrix, a way by which you can easily define the best tent for you, given weight, given what you're going to do with it, given how often you use it, how many days you're going to use it throughout the year, how much your budget is, we're going to wrap all that together and provide you with a very simple tool to be able to save you time, save you money and give you the best value for your buck. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel, then you'll get notification of other wild camping videos I'll be putting out in the very near future.